This video is a tough one because honestly, I contemplated sitting here and just spewing out all of the same benchmarks that so many people have done already, but I think I finally become just a little bit burnt out by benchmarks. I really don't think they tell the full story all the time. And after having a long conversation with Renee Ritchie on the latest episode of the Mac Rumor Show podcast, which by the way, you can check out wherever you get your podcasts, you can check out our latest episode or click here in the upper right corner for the video version. But what he said really stuck with me. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's nice. I know a lot of people get angry at us because we do videos on making videos, but we know how to make videos and Apple's obviously targeting video people. So they're like, why don't you just build WebKit? And you're like, I don't, I don't know how to build WebKit. I, I just don't. But you can hit those SOCs really hard with video. And it was hard to actually see the difference between the Max and the Ultra. And I liken it to like, if you're towing a, with a car or towing with a truck, but all you have is a bag of groceries, you're not gonna see much difference in the performance between what you're towing. You need to put like a boat behind it to actually see the difference. Long story short, I don't think I can hit the max capabilities that these machines are capable of producing with real world tests. The benchmarks show you the proof of what Apple was saying. And I will show you some benchmark scores right now. And in most instances, the Ultra was in fact nearly two times better than the M1 Max. But a Geekbench score or any other benchmark score might not tell you how much better one machine can operate over the other for your type of work. And it's also worth noting that these are two totally different form factors. And so you might already have your heart set on wanting a laptop and so yeah, you're gonna just pick the laptop. But if you are undecided and you don't know, then hopefully this video will help you. For reference, the Mac Studio that I have here is the base M1 Ultra model. Um, the specs are on screen, as well as the M1 Max MacBook Pro specs. So if you wanna know what we're running with, this is what we have. From a content creator, video editor point of view, the M1 Max has been a tremendous machine and an M1 Ultra is probably a bit too much machine for me, but it does help. I'll give you two examples of the type of videos that I create on a regular basis. Here is a normal 10 minute video shot in 4K with some light color correction and a few text plugins. This is my everyday workflow for the most part. Sure, there could be more plugins here or there. There could be some LUTs added in, uh, but for the most part, I kind of keep things sort of simple. And you know, this is what I'm working with on a daily basis. The other project that I do is I edit the podcast as well. And those are not really crazy from a video editing standpoint, but they are really, really long 4K timelines. And so when you have something that's an hour long, you're gonna be waiting a long time for that to export. So each machine handles these scenarios and editing like butter. There's no difference in my opinion between the two, rarely any lag or drop frames. And if it really ever does happen, it's happened with the M1 Max. It's a little early on the Mac Studio for me to have had that happen to me, but that's usually happened when I've had a bunch of applications open at the same time. And I think the RAM and CPU gets bogged down just a little bit with some Rosetta apps that might be running in the background as well as the editor. And so maybe sometimes that's when it happens. But again, it happens very rarely on the M1X or the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And I have not had it happen yet on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. So exporting videos is where I can gain a better sense of what's faster to me. That's where I will save most of my time. Uh, that's where that whole, you know, the old saying, time is money. That's where th I can really see and quantify whether or not these chips are helpful for me. It's gonna be different for everybody, but if you have a similar workflow as me, then maybe you can get the same idea. The M1 Ultra definitely saves me quite a bit of time, uh, but mostly for the podcast and stuff that's really long. The M1 Max was already beating out my last machine in the Mac Pro, so I was already really happy with that. My normal everyday video that I explained earlier, this one being at the 10 minute mark with the 4K timeline, some color corrections, plugins, etc. That finished in four minutes and 50 seconds on my M1 Max. The hour long podcast finished exporting in 26 minutes. So on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, the same videos rendered out like this. The 10 minute video that we talked about with the plugins and the color correction and everything, that actually finished in about three minutes, which saved me about a minute and 50 seconds, nearly two minutes of time, which it's, it's, that's quite a bit of time and pretty helpful, especially when you're in a hurry. The hour long podcast is where, you know, by the way, it's an eight gigabyte file. That finished in roughly 14 minutes and 23 seconds, saving me 12 minutes, which is fantastic. Obviously, I think the Ultra is probably a little bit too much for me and most people out there. 
Uh, if you think you'll need the extra CPU and GPU cores, if you need that power efficiency, or if money is just simply not an issue for you, then by all means, go for the M1 Ultra. You'll definitely be able to keep this computer out around for many years, and I think it'll work out perfectly. The real value is probably the M1 Max, and then just figuring out which form factor you want and what specific features you value. You can still save quite a bit of money by going Mac Studio, depending on whether you have a display and keyboard or mouse available. And even if you had to purchase some of those, I think the total cost would still be a little bit less than the cost of this base line M1 Max MacBook Pro, which was right around $3,500, $3,600. The Mac Studio does offer a ton of I.O. compared to the Mac Pro. There's like six total USB-C ports, and all six are Thunderbolt ports if you go for the M1 Ultra version. If you do the M1 Max, the two on the front are actually just USB-C. But on the back, there's also a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, USB type A, and then like the MacBook Pro, you do get an SD card reader, which is on the front. Absolutely love that. Uh, and there's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and an HDMI slot. Again, on the front, you have those two front-facing Thunderbolt 3 ports, unless you go with the M1 Max, those are just USB-C. And again, I really love that having the SD card reader on the front basically eliminates my need for a dock, uh, especially when my monitor also offers uh, three additional USB-C ports. So I think I'm set in that department. When I use my M1 Max on a daily basis, I did have this dock from OWC. I really loved it, but I just, had another thing on my desk and I'm trying to keep things minimal. And if you don't want to have a dock always plugged in, then yeah, there's something to consider with the different form factor of the Mac Studio. Now, if you're still unsure about whether you want to have a desktop or a laptop, there are some obvious benefits to the MacBook Pro form factor. Portability a good amount of diverse I.O., and a fantastic 16-inch mini-LED 120 hertz ProMotion display comes to mind. Personally, this is the best display that I have used on a laptop and obviously on a MacBook. Unfortunately, I rarely use the MacBook Pro as a laptop or a traditional laptop because I would dock it at my desk in clamshell mode and I tucked it away underneath my desk so that I didn't have a lot of clutter. And since travel has come to a halt for me still, the need for a laptop on the road has dwindled. But if things start to pick up here, that will obviously change and the laptop becomes a lot more valuable. Now, thermal management on both this 16-inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio have been fantastic. I've never experienced a very hot MacBook Pro on my lap or even the fans coming on. Not once. I've been using it since it came out daily for all of my work. Never once heard it kick on. Uh, even went on battery, never once. And the battery life, by the way, is pretty good. I used to never be able to finish a full video and have leftover battery life to do any kind of work. I can knock out a full edit for half of my day on this laptop and still have battery left over, which is fantastic. It's also early with the Mac Studio, but I can't imagine with this size and this thermal management that I'm gonna hear these fans either, especially when we take into account the M1 Ultra's super high effective power efficiency. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to what you need. I know that's a cop out, but it really is true. If you prefer a laptop or a desktop machine, then the answer is obvious. There's one desktop, there's one laptop. The MacBook Pro does give you the flexibility to do both. And so I'd say most of you out there are probably going to be fine with going with an M1 Max version of either machine. It probably makes sense to get the MacBook Pro since you can do that diversification of having it at your desk or taking it on the go. But there's definitely a performance improvement on the M1 Ultra. It's just a matter of whether or not money is really an object and you wanna spend that money for the time saving that I had, and if you think it's worth it. I think most of you out there would be fine with the M1 Max. And even if you think the M1 Max is too much, Apple does offer the M1 Pro for the MacBook Pro. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Of course, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've already picked up one of these machines, what do you think? If you're thinking about going towards one of these machines, please let me know which one you end up picking down in those comments. This has been Down With Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.